Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an ASUS Radeon HD 6770 and it was kindly sent to me by James over at CCL Online. Check them out by the way for all of your computing needs. I'm always buying components from their website because they have that delightful combination of great prices and excellent customer service. The 6770 released in 2011 and depending on what version you wanted varied in price anywhere from about 110 US dollars to 140. It was a similar story here in the UK with some variants available for as little as 100 pounds. These days, well, you can find them for just £15 at webuy.com. And at this price, oh, it might be tempting. I'll be honest, if it wasn't sent to me, I'd have probably never got round to reviewing one. But after researching it a little bit, I discovered something quite interesting. According to the Steam Hardware Survey, the amount of people using a 6700 series-based card has been on the rise since December last year, and the market share is now above a whopping 2%. You can see I was really clutching at straws when I was looking for the info that made this card special, but at the end of the day, it was just the standard entry-level rebrand of a 5770. We've never reviewed one before though, so why not see how it handles itself in modern games? This ASUS 1GB version has an 850MHz core clock, 1000 megahertz memory clock and requires one 6-pin connector to function. It also features exclusive super alloy power technology which makes use of a special alloy formula that's highly heat resistant, magnetic and anti-corrosive leading to better voltage stability and according to the website overclocking performane. But what sort of performane can we really expect to see from this thing in 2019? Well to find out I've paired it with my Ryzen 5 1600 and 8 gigs of 3000 MHz DDR4. A fairly modest yet still very capable combination that will let our card here reach its maximum potential. I recently posted on Instagram that I've been playing Fallout 76 and to be honest I've been enjoying it. The lack of other human NPCs is certainly a shame but I've always liked the general exploration and for the £7.99 I got this for in a sale I can't really complain. But this isn't a game review, oh no. If you want to see any of those maybe check out my second channel Classic Gaming in HD. Nice little advertisement in there. Here we're all about the performance and the 1GB 6770 offers a mixed bag. On the one hand, we saw a pretty low frame rate during a walk through the outdoor areas, but when I went inside, it wasn't uncommon to see the FPS creep up to and very occasionally go beyond 30. The game was of course running at the lowest settings and 720p resolution. In The Witcher 3, you should be able to maintain a solid 30 FPS most of the time at 1024x768 resolution with the low settings and post processing. As I ran around trying to cause trouble in this camp, my FPS stayed pretty stable. I don't think turning the resolution up would be a good idea though. And the same can be said as we move on to Battlefield 5. As I made my way up this hill in the France level, the frame rate stayed pretty steady and stuck closer to 40 rather than 30. I was using the lowest in-game settings but kept the resolution scale at 100% so that things didn't become more blurry. This result, despite the sub 720p resolution, really surprised me, considering this is a modern AAA title. The CPU may have helped quite a bit though, and it's worth remembering that a Ryzen 5 and an HD 6770 probably isn't representative of most real world situations. Speaking of big AAA releases though, and Far Cry 5 was next on the test list, and performance wasn't very good here at all. 720p at low gave us a return of around 25 FPS, which wasn't terrible, but I wouldn't say this was playable. Of course, the GPU does feature just one gig of VRAM, which in 2019 probably isn't enough in most cases. Saying that though, and Battlefield 5 managed it, it even said my drivers were unsupported. So I guess that's the star of the show so far. PUBG also produced a better result than I thought it would. The frame rate hovered between 30 and 40 most of the time at 720p low, though making our way into busier areas caused this figure to drop quite a bit. Still the result here was a lot better than what I was anticipating, so I guess the 2% of gamers that still use a card like this are onto something. It feels like I've entered some sort of secret club where members are all sworn to secrecy regarding the better than expected 6770 performance, and that's why the ownership is going up. <laughs> Finally, Bioshock Remastered ran very well at 1080p with the highest detail level. These are the sort of games that this card handles best, remasters of older classics. But I can't end the video without saying I was genuinely surprised by this thing's performance in titles like Battlefield and PUBG. 
For the £15 this can be found for, it's starting to seem like a pretty good deal in some respects, but overall it really is too much of a mixed bag to pin your expectations on because the frame rate will really differ from title to title. So, I hope you've enjoyed a look back at this card. If you have, leave a like on this video, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, let me know if you're the proud owner of one of these in the comments below, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.